Um, my name is Rachel Parsons and I'm a Bermudian scientist uh, working at BIOS, the Bermuda Institute of Ocean Sciences. Um, I study microbial oceanography, so I look at microbes in the ocean, which are bacteria and viruses. So we collect water samples off the ship using the Atlantic Explorer and the CTD. Um, we take the samples, um, we fix it, which basically means that the bacteria is preserved. Um, we then count the cells, so we do this for viruses and for bacteria. And we look at the different bacterial communities using the microscope, which is fluorescent in situ hybridization. And this is a little complicated. I work at BIOS mainly because I'm a Bermudian and it's a chance to work with scientists in the US. Um, I work closely with Dr. Craig Carlson from the University of California in Santa Barbara and Dr. Stephen Giovanoni at Oregon State University as well as Dr. Maya Breitbart at the University of South Florida. Um, all three of these are very well known in their fields so the chance to work with them means that we can do some interesting work here at BIOS. For Bios Explorer, we decided to look at bacteria in the inshore waters around Bermuda, from Castle Harbor, Cooper's Island, St. George's Harbor, and then compared them to the Bat site, which is six hours south of the island. First, we inverted the test tubes to mix the dead bacteria, and then we dyed the filters so that the DNA of the bacteria would show up and put them on top of the filters. Then we put three milliliters of water into test tubes, drained out all the water or suctioned it all out so that just the bacteria was left. Then we put in some Daffy and drained that out too so that all the bacteria was turned blue. Then we went and removed the filters from the suctions, making sure that we didn't flip them over because the bacteria is on one side and placed them onto the glass slides uh, with oil. Uh, we put oil on first and then put them on. And then we put down cover-up slips with more oil on them. And we repeated that for each slide. We have just come into the dark room to use the epifluorescent microscope to count the bacteria we just stained in the other room. The first thing we would do is we would get the same oil we used when we first made the slides, put a drop of that on top of the cover slip, and then we would set the slides into a groove on the uh, stage of the microscope. Uh, once, we, once we got to that point, we would switch over to the computer, move the joystick around, which was used to move the lens and get different uh, sites. We would find 12 of those, focus in on each one, take a, snap a picture, and save it to a water start folder. Then we would send the water start folder over to the other computer where they would use the computer to count them. You take the picture on the microscope, open the picture on the software, and then we select the DAPI setting, and then we record how many blue dots we see, and then we do that 12 times, and then we exclude the highest and lowest points, so we have 10 all together now, and then we put the 10 left over onto an Excel spreadsheet to analyze. After we sent them over to the other computer, we would look directly into the microscope and start counting them by hand. Next to the microscope, there was a little um, clicker. With the clicker, we, all we would really do is just like, kind of tap a button for every dot we saw. And at the end, we would check out the number on the clicker and write it down in the grid sheet. Um, what they found was Castle Harbor, they sampled far away and close to the dump site. As they got closer to the dump site, the numbers increased to about 1.5 million cells per mil. At Cooper's Island, which is kind of a little bit more offshore, so you're getting more to the south shore where the water is more dynamic, um, they got 0.8 million cells per mil, which is kind of what you would see at the bat site. So once you get out into the Cooper Island area, you're basically considered offshore. And then they looked at St. George's Harbor, which was almost close to 2 million cells per mil. The reason St. George's Harbor was so high is actually where they sampled it. They sampled it kind of in a little, little bay 
that didn't get a lot of um, water movement. So the bacteria were able to increase and they weren't washed away. But two million cells were very similar to the highest that you saw in Castle Harbor, which was 1.8, which is typical of our inshore waters. Some other areas like Mills Creek can get up as much as three to four million cells per mil. And Mills Creek is a harbor, so boats are moored there because there isn't a lot of wave action so it's protected, but it also means that the water doesn't get changed up very much. Bacteria are the only ones able to use dissolved organic carbon. So dissolved organic carbon is produced when things die and it kind of ooze back into the water. Bacteria are able to use that carbon up. They use it and then they're eaten by flagellates, which are a, a zooplankton, and it basically goes up the food chain. 